The world of Black Desert is your oyster. And do what you will with it. But I'm here to help you make some gear decisions. <laughs> what is up, my Ray? I am. Crimson. We're going to help you along with your gearing path. And we're going to get right into it. And the first thing we're going to have to do is... Gonna have to explain a couple of key concepts to you to be able to differentiate your gear progression. But first, we're gonna head to Olita, because that's my favorite spot in the game right now, and this is where we're gonna be doing the gear guide. There is nuance with this discussion, but I'm gonna simplify it overall for newer players, seasonal players, and people who are mid tier to be able to make faster progression without having to worry about as much of the, the small details, if you will, to kind of streamline their progression. The main reason being, I feel like a lot of the stats in BDO, especially when it comes to gearing up, only really matter at the most high mid-tier to end game. In other words than that, there's not much to really be worrying about in my personal opinion. DR versus evasion versus classes who can run both. This is what we have to decide first. Your main DR classes are going to be Archer, Dark Knight, Draconia, Guardian, Nova, Tamer, Ranger, Valkyrie, Warrior, and Berserker. For Evasion, Hashashin, Mystic, Shy, and Striker. And lastly, classes who can run both DR and Evasion and have different build paths, which lead to a lot of great versatility, but will also mean more decision making in the future. Those classes are Corsair, Kuno, Lon, Ninja, Musa, Musa, Mewa, Sage, Sorceress, Witch, and Wizard. For those of you who are both in the evasion and damage reduction classes, your gear is pretty much set up very standardized. These are the main paths that you want to build to optimize for your character. For the hybrids who can have access to both DR and evasion and do well, I'm going to break this decision down into two simplified answers. As this is a guide from seasonal into entry level endgame, you are mainly going to want to decide, do you want to gain access to PvP faster or do you prioritize PvE? If you favor the PvP side of things earlier on, you're going to want to go DR. And if you want to favor PvE, you are going to want to go Evasion. The main trade-offs of these being DR initially will be able to get you into PvE faster because you will feel a little bit tankier. And with Evasion, you won't get tankier till more into endgame. But Evasion does have a better sustainability in PvE in general. Also for the hybrid classes, do keep in mind that later on you will be making more decisions to refine your build in endgame. If I had to put my personal opinion on it, I would just go evasion. I would tough it out, just go evasion and build that way towards your endgame. Because that's exactly what I'm doing right now in my Musa. I'm just waiting until I can get them C20s and just BOOM! All of a sudden go hybrid and tanky as hell. With all that being said, and now that you've made your decision if you're going to be damage reduction or evasion, let's get into the builds. I will be explaining both side by side and you will see that actually the progression for both Suck and Awakening does not differ too much, including the differences between DR and Evasion. Again, to preface, the main reason why I did this is to streamline progression without as much thought so you can actually put more action into your gearing. The bigger decisions that you'll be making won't really come into effect as much until you actually do hit endgame. The first things I highly recommend you do out of seasonal, if you're not already in a guild, look for a guild. You're going to get so many buffs and passives from guild, it's going to be really good for your character. And second, you're going to want to get these two sets of artifacts. The first is you're going to want to run two monster damage reduction artifacts with two sets of iron walls. That means two iron walls in each set. This is mainly going to provide you a lot more tankiness to be able to grind at other spots when you are a lower gear score. The other set is you are going to want to have two extra monster damage artifacts and combine those with two sets of rage so that when you get more comfortable at certain spots you'll have more damage at those monster spots. In tandem with this also I highly highly suggest doing your guaranteed accessory quest from Datina. I will be leaving a link down in the description for the guaranteed accessories so you can begin that quest line. I believe the initial steps is talking to your black spirit, summon your black spirit, and there should be something in their quest about the guaranteed accessory. As well, do not sell Kafras. I know it is tempting to sell Kafras because it will make gains, but you're just going to have to buy them back later. And yes, there is an argument for the efficiency to be able to buy them back later with mer with the money comparison made, but I don't believe, no, just, just save them. <laughs> With those prerequisites out of the way, here is your seasonal starting gear. And this is where you'll go to when you go into DR for both Suck and Awakening. The only thing that I'll be changing if you decide to go Evasion is you'll be using Liebers in your gloves and you'll be using Muskins in your boots. Other than that, the progression for both Suck and her Awakening are both exactly the same progression correlating to each of their individual specs. 
first, and you're probably not going to like this one. Start your Bartali journal. That's going to give you the most stats for out of any of the journals that are going to be helping you at a lower gear score. Next, you will be focusing your pen red nose guaranteed from Jatina via the Tuvala exchange. For Suck, then focus Zarka as penning that for your guaranteed, and for Awakening, focus on your dandy. And again, I'm going to hit you with it. Journal, go focus on Deev. Start working on Deev's journal next. Lastly, and a lot of people debate this one, but I still think it's worth it. Technically, it's on the borderline of expenditure, but get your guaranteed helmet. This one will take you a little bit longer compared to the others, but it's definitely worth it in my opinion to still get it. Buy a Tep Basse. It is one of the cheaper the accessories and one of the easier AP gains early on. For both specs, focus on getting a reform level 4 Kudum. This has the exact same stats of a Pen Kudum minus 1 DP. It is worth for both specs. I just put it as a V on the planner just to simplify things because they don't have reform level 4 on the planner, unfortunately. Start working on your Doran Morgrim journal as well. This will be able to give you some drop buffs that you'll be able to use to hopefully start going for some rare items that you want. Mainly, I would suggest your infinite pots. Get some friends and guildies to help you next with the Elvia main quest line so that way you can start doing the barrier of infestation quest to be able to guarantee, especially on Suck, the 269 bracket. After you finish this, buy a Tech Crescent ring. Grind it up. Just do it. And buying this Tech Crescent, I do want to preface, I highly suggest buying all your gear to save yourself some stress some time and to make them gains a little bit quicker your next upgrade should be pen bags it would be really nice to have that accuracy early on and your guaranteed jatina for at least tet should be done right around now you should slot that in as well at this point i think it's still good to start increasing that dp and get your pen ergons and then start using your kafirs to see for all your armors we're going to push them brackets a little bit. Hell yeah. Next, it's a little bit of a grind and it is going to take you a little while. First, you're going to get your Vel's Heart to get that nice 3 AP and your first Tet Disto. But Crims, why am I getting a Tet Disto? I'm DR. Don't argue. Just do it. Listen to me. Also, specifically on Succession, in order to get the bracket, you're going to want to C1 your Zarka. The main reason why I suggest this is because the C1 Zarka is going to be a lot cheaper than possibly going to what the next build would be. What do I mean by next build? Well, in this one, you're going to want to get, for sure, Blackstar on Awakening spec. There is no question, just go Blackstar. With Succession, however, if you want to have a PvP focus and more linear progression, stay with your Zarka. If you're only going to do PvE, get the Blackstar on your main hand. For this example, I am just going to be sticking with the Zarka because most people will probably want to go with the linear progression for ease. Your Pendatina, your guaranteed Pendatina accessory for your Crescent should also be finished right around this time. Slot that in. Easy AP. Now that you're at this bracket, you'll be looking good in both specs. Now we're going to rush C10 your Red Notes. That way you can start grinding for that Dead God in the future when you hit more towards Endgame. And you want to use the rest of your Kafras afterwards to one by one C6 your other armors. Right around this time, and this is where DR tends to climb and spike really fast, is if you want to get into PvP, you can go for that pen maneuver and you can hit that easy 301 bracket. If you were evasion, however, you're going to be staying right here for now as there isn't many upgrades you can make that aren't of a huge expenditure. Make sure when you get to this point, you want to finish off your journals in this order of Fugar, Heralds, and then Pavino Greco for the most benefit in time. And after all this, I have to say your gear be looking solid now, and welcome to entry level endgame for both specs. I hope this guide was helpful and informative and help you guys streamline your goals in BDO to make it a little bit more efficient. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below, and until next time guys, Crimson out.